Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Participants and Guests, warm greetings from Rotterdam, where I'm speaking today from the largest floating office in the world. This meeting could not be happening at a more critical time. Our planet's climate is changing. Hundreds of millions of people are living with the consequences. And with warmer temperatures, rising sea levels and more frequent and extreme weather events, Fewer regions in the world are more vulnerable to the impacts of climate change than yours. And in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic collided with these climate shocks, decimating people's livelihoods. The COVID crisis, colleagues, is also a wake-up call that we're utterly unprepared for the next crisis, the climate emergency. Some countries in your regions have over 3% of GDP at risk from vulnerable infrastructure to climate shocks. And SITs are especially vulnerable to natural disasters, translating climate risk into economic and financial risk. And as governments across the globe begin uh, spending trillions of dollars from the pandemic, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to build a more resilient, prosperous, and economic future. And for this, climate adaptation and building resilience must be prioritized both in action and in financing. It is good for the economy, it's good for our health, and it's good for our planet. And back in September 2019, a few years ago, the Global Commission on Adaptation called for three revolutions to accelerate the pace and ambition of climate adaptation across the globe. Three things. One, a revolution in understanding to ensure that climate risks are fully understood. Two, a revolution in planning to improve policy and investment decisions on how we implement solutions. And three, a revolution in finance to mobilize the funds necessary to accelerate adaptation, including innovative finance, such as debt for climate swaps. If these were priorities before the pandemic, they definitely are priorities now. Again, this is not about choosing between competing priorities, between health, the economy, or the climate. No, climate adaptation is essential for all three. The organization I lead, the Global Center on Adaptation, is the only international organization exclusively focused on climate adaptation. And earlier this year, we we're honored to be partnering with CELAC, led by, as you know, the Mexican presidency, on a policy paper making recommendations for a green and resilient recovery in Latin America and the Caribbean. To address the social, climatic and health crisis generated by COVID, we showed how measures can address inequality, generate shovel-ready jobs, and regulate the financial system to mobilize private finance towards climate resilience. This new agenda, endorsed by select ministers, highlighted that investing between 3 and 13 billion US dollars each year in resilient infrastructure in LAC could generate 700 billion in net benefits by 2030. Today's discussions will be key to sustaining the momentum for climate adaptation throughout your region. And the following regional dialogues amongst all 48 members of the Climate Vulnerable Forum, they're essential to build a robust partnerships that we need to promote adaptation action globally. My argument is this. We need to build forward better from the current crisis of today to prevent the crisis of tomorrow. The Global Center on Adaptation, in our capacity as managing partner of the CVF and the V20, is ready to support you in any way we can. And as we look forward to COP26 in Glasgow in November, which is around the corner, we must ensure we do everything we can to accelerate adaptation action around the world with concrete, practical actions. Today's meeting is a crucial step to getting there. Count us in.